What's up, YouTube? Team Movies here. Since that new terrible film, The Kitchen, is a film that takes place in 1978, I decided to do my top 10 favorite movies of 1978. Because, I mean, you know, I'm 27 years old, and you know what? I really do love watching some of the classic stuff. I mean, my, uh, you know, uh, my uh, mother, my uh, grandparents have got me into uh, these uh, classic uh, films, and I really... I really find you appreciate some of the classics. So, with that being said, here's my list. Coming in at number 10 is... Coming in at number 10 is going to be a film called Heaven Can Wait. Now, this movie is directed by uh, War uh, Warren Beatty and Buck Henry. Warren Beatty is a good director, by the way. I feel like he never really gets the recognition he deserves as a filmmaker. But he's made some really interesting stuff that I've enjoyed. Anyway, uh, Heaven Can Wait, you know, stars, also stars War Beatty as uh, this character named Joe Pendleton. He's like a quarterback for the uh, Los Angeles Rams, and he ends up getting killed in a uh, auto accident. And so, like... So, like, in the uh, afterlife, uh, Joe ends up discovering that he has a, uh, that his guardian angel, played by uh, Buck Henry, has taken him from his uh, body prematurely, and he is, like, pretty much due many uh, more years later on Earth, and he's, like, unable to uh, return to his body, so jo uh, Joe ends up assuming the form of a, a greedy multi-millionaire um, industrialist named uh, Leo Farnsworth. And as a Farnsworth, Joe ends up attempting to uh, return to fo uh, football, and he falls in love with this uh, activist named uh, Betty, uh, played by uh, Julie Christie. It's a really interesting film, you know. Like, I mean, a film about where, uh, you know, someone ends up dying and uh, ends up becoming someone different. I think that, I mean, I never know, like, you know, they never, you know, I never um, understood on where we go, like, what happens when we, like, after we die and all, like, do we get, uh, you know, do our body get transferred into someone else, and, you know, I, I really never really understood the afterlife, and this is, it's an interesting film that, that pretty much, uh, shows you about the afterlife, and, you know, you can get reincarnated as, um, another person, and, yeah, Heaven Can Wait is also really, you know, it has lots of heart to it, it's pretty, it's sometimes funny at times, Warren Beatty, I mean, he, like I said, he's a really cool director, and he's a legendary actor. I mean, whether you're talking about uh, Bonnie and Clyde or uh, Rules Don't Apply or anything, Warren Beatty is just a man, and, you know, he was terrific in that. So, if, if uh, you guys haven't seen Heaven Can Wait, go check that one out. All right, coming in at number nine is going to be The Buddy Holly Story. Now, this is probably my f my favorite performance of uh, Gary Busey. Now, Gary Busey's the man. I love Gary Busey. You know, whether it's a Lethal, um, lethal Weapon or a Point Break. But his best work is as playing famed rock and roll star Buddy Holly. I think it's the best performance of his career. I believe this is actually the movie that really made him break out. I, I believe it was this. Um, or it could have been something else that made him break out. But he was terrific as Buddy Holly. I never knew Gary Busey could sing either. I mean, I still don't know if it, that was his real voice or anything. But man, Gary Busey really, really up us out of tune. And I believe this movie also scored an Oscar nomination for Best Picture. I think uh, Gary Busey scored a nomination for Best Actor. I think there could have been an argument made that uh, Gary Busey could have won his award for this. Because he was that good. And... Yeah, if you guys never seen the Buddy Holly story, you know, go check it out. I mean, sadly, a Buddy Holly passed away at a very young age, and you know, this really showed him uh, from like his music stardom all the way to his uh, tragic uh, passing. And it's a really interesting film, and yeah, definitely go check out the Buddy Holly story if you guys haven't seen it. All right, coming in at number eight is going to be George A. Romero's classic, Dawn of the Dead. Now, this movie was coming off the heels of the uh, iconic Night of the Living Dead. And Dawn of the Dead, of, of course, you guys don't know, uh, Zack Snyder actually did a remake of Dawn of the Dead. 
which I really quite enjoy the remake, but the original is iconic. You know, it's really creepy. It's a great a zombie flick. You know, it's pro like outside of a Night of the Living Dead, it's probably one of my favorite zombie films there is. I mean, it has zombies in a mall. What what could you want? And George A. Romero, you know, he's he was an iconic zombie director, and what he did with Dawn of the Dead was amazing. And if you guys never seen Dawn of the Dead, go check it out. It's a really good one. All right. Coming in at number seven, it's going to Up and Smoke. For all my stoner friends out there, or anyone, um, any of my friends who or fans or subscribers or anything, who are either a stoner or not a stoner, you can appreciate this movie. Up and Smoke, starring Cheech and Chong. I mean, they were the original Jay and Silent Bob. I mean, before we had Jay and Silent Bob, before we had Friday, before we, before there was a, a Red Man and a Method Man, there was Cheech and Chong. Up and Smoke is awesome. I love this movie. And crazy that this movie actually got released in uh, seven, in 78. Like, I thought this movie was like in the 80s or something, but I double checked and it's a 1978 movie, which is interesting, I guess. But uh, it's, uh, it's really awesome. I mean, you know, here you've got. Uh, Like, pretty much here, uh, Tommy Chung is like an un unemployed uh, pot smoking slack. I mean, slacker. And uh, there is also, um, like, he ends up ditching. Tommy Chung plays this guy named Anthony Stoner. Get the name Stoner. Who ends up ditching his uh, strict parents and hit the road. And he ends up meeting this kind spirit uh, guy named Pedro uh, D. Pascas, played by Cheech Marin. And the drug, uh, are invest and the drug investing, um, Duo are like soon arrested for possession of marijuana, and uh, they and they also uh, end up competing in like a rock uh, band contest, and uh, as well. So it's part road trip film, and or uh, like I said, you know, if it wasn't for you know, if it wasn't for Chicha Chong, you know, we wouldn't have uh, Jay and Silent Bob, we wouldn't have Friday, you know, we wouldn't even have High uh, How High, you know, Chicha Chong paid the wave for stoner-based uh, films, and what a great job they did, because I, I freaking love Up This Smoke, it's, and I, I also love Chi Chi Chong, too, I mean, who, I'm hoping one of these days Chi Chi Chong makes a comeback, I'd love to see them do, like, another film together one of these days, and, ha, you know, how cool is it seeing Tommy Chong in uh, the new uh, Jay and Silent Bob reboot trailer, I literally thought that was George Collin for some reason, but it turned out to be Tommy Chong with I guess it makes sense because uh, he said, um, "Looks like this reboot went up in smoke." I literally almost forgot that was Tommy Chong at first, and also Tommy Chong recently uh, performed like dance on uh, had a uh, performed at Dance with the Stars, so there's there was that. So yeah, if you guys never seen Up in Smoke, or actually if you guys never seen any of uh, yeah if you guys never seen any of Chi Chong's work, go check some of that stuff out. Okay, coming in at number six is going. Coming in at number six is going to the Wiz. Now the Wiz is awesome. I mean, it, it's like a. Uh, you know, The Wiz is kind of like a uh, retelling version of The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> like, you had uh, Diana Ross as uh, as Dorothy. Uh, Michael Jackson did a wonderful job as the Scarecrow. I love Michael Jackson. As that uh, you know, you had uh, Richard Pryor as the Wizard. Uh, you had um, you had Nipsey Russell as uh, Tin Man. Ted Ross as Carrie Lyon. I mean, yeah, this was a great retelling of The Wizard of Oz, and it has some really great songs, whether it's uh, Ease On Down the Road and all. Oh, I love this movie. I mean, you know, I still prefer The Wizard of Oz over this, because The Wizard of Oz is my favorite movie of all time. But The Wiz is, is great, and it's probably one of my favorite, like, besides Michael Jackson's music, 
The Wiz is also my favorite thing that Michael Jackson has ever done. I mean, there was the uh, Wiz, uh, the Wiz live stage. There was a live televised um, event of the Wiz on NBC, and I think I, I think it was uh, Elijah Kelly who played uh, Scarecrow. Elijah Kelly was good. He was great, but he still no Michael Jackson. I mean. There's literally people who try to copy Michael Jackson and all, but nobody could replace that guy. No, the guy could sing, the guy could dance, I mean, and he, like, this was actually the film that, like, his breakout film, bro, he never really done, like, any other films after this. Like, he did Moonwalker, and he had a part in Man in Black 2, but he was never really, like, that much of an actor. But he was actually terrific in the woods, and maybe a little disappointing that he never really done more acting. Because I thought Michael Jackson would have been. I, I think he could have been good in other films. So, I mean, heck, well, believe it or not, Michael Jackson was actually uh, campaigning to be a uh, Spider-Man. I'm not kidding. Michael Jackson could have been Spider-Man, but that never happened. And I love Michael Jackson, but thank God that never happened. But uh, yeah, if you guys never seen the woods, and not to mention it takes place in uh, New York City. I mean, A Wizard of Oz set in New York City. One more key ask for there. And yeah, definitely go check out The Wizard if you guys haven't seen that. Alright, coming in at number seven. It's going to one of the best college comedies there is. Animal House. Directed by the great John Landis, starring the great John Belushi, uh, Kevin, uh, a young Kevin Bacon was in this. You had Donald um, Sutherland. I mean, I mean, a really good cast. Like it's where these uh, freshmen who are who end up um, arriving at college, and the freshmen are played by uh, Thomas Bulas. And Stephen First, who sadly Stephen First recently passed away. So rest in peace, uh, Stephen First. Anyway, they end up attempting to uh, play to the Snooty Omega uh, Theta Pi House. And they are pretty much, they end up getting rejected and lowering um, their standards. And so, like, they end up trying to, um, at the notorious uh, rowdy uh, Delta 10 Chai House, and end up getting, in tr um, they, end, they pretty much end up getting in. And uh, you got a college dean, uh, John Vernon, a uh, play by John Vernon. Pretty much has it in for the Deltas. And uh, there's also like an iconic food fight scene here. You know, uh, one of the best iconic food food fight scenes was great. In, it was great in the um, Animal House. Uh, you had uh, John Belushi in those robes. I mean, Animal House. You know, if my uncle was like was with me, he'll tell you how much of a classic Animal House is. Because frankly, my uncle actually introduced me to Animal House. And actually, if you guys never seen none of the '70s comedies, whether it's Animal House or Up in Smoke or anything like that, go check some of that stuff out. I mean, frankly, Animal House would never get made today. You know, there's jokes in Animal House that will fly over people's heads. And I think the movie still holds up today, but like I said, the jokes will, they would not fly at all today. I mean, could you imagine Animal House getting made today, Sanders? People will find anything in Animal House offensive and, and all, but Animal House is just iconic and such a really funny uh, film. And if you guys have never seen Animal House, do yourself a favor, go watch Animal House. I mean, it's National Lampoon, not to mention, so there's that, and... Yeah, Animal House is, is a classic. Alright, coming in at number four is going to The Deer Hunter. Now, the f now this film actually takes place in 1968, and it's about uh, these three friends uh, played by Robert De Niro, uh, Christopher Walken, and uh, John Savage, who are like lifelong uh, friends from a uh, working class Pennsylvania steel town. And they try to uh, prepare to ship out overseas following uh, Stephen's uh, elaborate uh, wedding. And like one uh, final uh, group, and they end up going on like a final group hunting trip in uh, Vietnam. And so like in Vietnam, their uh, dreams of uh, military honor are like quickly uh, shattered when um, by uh, a millionaires of war. And so like uh, pretty much those who have uh, survived a uh, haunting experience and all that. So, 
So yeah, uh, it's pretty much uh, their buddies who are um, trying to pretty much take down each other and all, and all that hell breaks loose throughout the film. Uh, you had you got Meryl Streep in this, and who doesn't love Meryl Streep? Meryl Streep is just she's the queen. And what a crazy film this is! I mean, granted, it's been a while since I've seen this, but The Deer Hunter is a classic. You know, you got you got Bobby D himself, Robert De Niro. I mean, what a great actor Robert De Niro is! I love Robert De Niro. You got the great Christopher Walken. I mean, doing his great Christopher Walken. I mean, okay, that's the last time I'm ever going to do a Christopher Walken impression. I mean, I can't do a Christopher Walken impression to save my life. Like, yeah, I, I probably should not should stop trying to impersonate uh, Christopher Walken. But uh, yeah, Christopher Walken is just the man. I love Christopher Walken, and you know they end up go becoming friends. Like they end up friend at first, but then they become enemies throughout the whole film. And they're trying to take down each other. I mean, the Deer Hunter is, it's insane. It's probably one of the most, it's definitely one of the most iconic movies of the 70s. You know, it, it won Christopher Walken his first ever Oscar. Well, a well-deserving Oscar win, not to mention. And sad, sadly, the director recently passed away. Like, I think it was last year or something. And, yeah, the Deer Hunter is... It's a great film, and if, if you guys never seen The Deer Hunter by now, do yourself a favor, go watch The Deer Hunter. It's, it's a classic. Alright, coming in at number three is maybe the best horror movie of that year. Anyway, my number three favorite of my number three favorite is going to Halloween. I mean, Halloween is one of the most iconic horror films out there. Directed by the great Sean Carpenter, starring Jamie Lee Curtis, who of course later on reprised her role for uh, the recent remake or sequel, I should say. You know, Halloween is one of the most iconic slasher movies there is. You know, Michael Myers is one of the most iconic horror villains. You know, everyone loves Michael Myers. You know, he's... And not to mention, he had Donna Pleasant as uh, Dr. Samuel Loomis. Great, great performance by Donna uh, Pleasant. You had one of the most iconic uh, music scores. And, yeah, Halloween is just... It's iconic. It's a classic. And, yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for Halloween, we probably would have iconic slashes. Like, we wouldn't have uh, Jason or Freddy or anything. So, yeah, definitely go check out Halloween if you guys never seen, um, seen the original. Coming in at number two is going to Richard Donner's classic, Superman. Superman is one of the best comic book movies there is. I mean, you know, Henry Cavill is a great Superman. Um, you know, Brandon Ralph was great. Uh, Tom Welling was cool. Uh, Tyler Oakland is cool. But they cannot at all beat Christopher Reeve. Christopher Reeve as Superman is one of the most iconic characters there is. You know, one of the most Pretty much one of Reed's most iconic roles. You know, you had Mar the, the great Marlon Brando as a uh, Jar L, who's of course uh, the dad of uh, of Superman. Um, you also had uh, you had Glenn Ford as uh, as Jonathan Kent, who's of course uh, Clark Kent's dad. You had uh, Phyllis Daxter as a uh, Martha Kent. Uh, you had uh, Margaret Ketter, eight, uh, the late Margaret Ketter as a uh, Lois Slain. Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor. I mean, it's directed by Richard Donner, who of course went on to direct uh, *Lethal Weapon*. You know, it has a great iconic fly scene with uh, Superman and Lois Lane. One of the best love interests with uh, Superman and, with uh, Clark Kent and Lois Lane. I mean, Margaret Kidder is also the best Lois Lane we had. I mean, sorry Amy Adams, but Margaret Kidder is the best. And yeah. 
I mean, if it wasn't for Superman, we probably wouldn't have stuff like Batman or... or I mean, Superman really paved the way for the comic book movies we have today. And, yeah, it's it's iconic. So, like, if you guys never seen uh, the 1978 uh, Superman, definitely check that one out. It's a really good one. All right. Now, what movie is better than Superman? What movie is better than The Deer Hunter? Uh, what's better than Animal House? The, the best movie of 1978 is maybe the best musical there is. That is going to Greece. My mom literally introduced me to Greece. And you know, I love Greece. It's one of the best musicals there is. And you've got John Travolta as a greaser Danny who ends up falling in love with uh, Sandy, played by Olivia Newton John. Uh, you know, this movie has some great iconic music moments. You know, some of the best music are featured out of Greece. You know, you got uh, the Pink Ladies, you got the T Birds as well. Such a great film. It's the best musical there is. Uh, great performances by John Travolta and Olivia Newton John. I mean, this was when John Travolta actually cared, you know, about acting. I mean, this is definitely John, one of John Travolta's best work as well. I mean, Grease is iconic. It's, like I said, uh, everyone today still knows what Grease is. Like, if I go out, like, around the street, ask the people if they ever heard of Grease or seen Grease, they'll tell you they've seen Grease. I mean, Grease gets shown on TV almost every time. You know, I've seen it on TV dozens of times. It's, I, I actually even saw the movie on the big screen one time. They had, like, this uh, sing-along uh, once, and I, so I I never seen Grease on the big screen. So I went to watch it on the big screen. If if you guys are in a deer, like, have a deer that uh, is showing Grease, do yourself a favor, watch Grease on the big screen. It's a great experience. And, yeah... I mean, yeah, if you guys never had a chance to check out Greece, Like, definitely go... Uh, definitely go watch Greece because it's just iconic, and... My favorite song out of Greece is actually Summer Lovin'. I could play that song over and over. I love Summer Lovin'. And yeah, Grease is definitely an iconic film, and definitely go check it out if you guys never seen that. But yeah, yeah, we still never seen Grease. I mean, let's be real there. But let me leave you guys. Uh, what are some of your? Oh wait, let me do the quick rundown. I'm almost sorry about that. Uh, let me uh quickly do that rundown. All right. Okay, 10, Heaven Can't Wait. 9, The Buddy Kelly Story. 8, Dawn of the Dead. 7, Up in Smoke. 6, The Whips. 5, Animal House. 4, The Deer Hunter. Uh, 3, Halloween. 2, Superman. 1, Grease. So I lost the cursor. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, now there are other um, movies that got released in 1978 that are really great as well. Let me pull up the list. 1978 movies. Okay. Um, uh, Evasion of the Body Snatches is good. Jaws 2, which... I quite I thought George II was okay. Uh, Midnight Express. Uh, let's see. Days of Heaven. The Boys from Brazil. Foul Play with Chevy Chase and uh, and Goldie Hawn. Revenge of the Pink Panther. Damien Omen Two. Uh, Death on the Nile. Every Which Way But Here. Oh, Every Which Way But Loose. Sorry about that. Um, let's see. California Sweet. Uh, Warship Dawn. Uh, there's lots of interesting movies that got released that year. 
But let me leave it to you guys. You know, what are some of your favorite movies from 1978? Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell for more notifications. This here is T-Movie, sign off.